we are live now. Hello, we are on planet Earth. Um, I don't know the name of our galaxy. Milky Way galaxy. Milky, Milky Way galaxy. Way. Yes. Yeah, Milky Way. Solar system, third planet. Um, uh, 2014 year from the birth of Jesus Christ, official birth of Jesus Christ, and today we have Saturday, September 9th. Welcome everybody. Hey, September and, 9th. What? 29. 20. Morning. Yeah. September 27. I'm sorry, I switched. Uh, the, so month, month is nine, but September 27. I'm sorry. September 27. <laughs> That's a consensus reality. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, Angela, um, Gabriel, hi, Jan, hello, hello, Justin, hello, Caitlin, and we got who? Kim. Nice to see you. Hi, yeah. Max, Major, hello, Ravi, Sabrina, uh -oh. Sarah, everybody, hi. hid now. People hide hello. their face. Hello, hello. Full house today, all very early. Hi, yeah, nice to see you for a change in some official setting. <laughs> Where? It looks like he's. he's nice to see you. Good yeah. face, good headphones, and nice background. Yeah. yeah Caitlin, I finally, you finally, finally have the face with Yay, your face. Caitlin, yes. Hey. <laughs> and thank you, to someone who donated the webcam so we can see Caitlin's face. And that's hey. so much joy. Thank you. Very nice. Thank All you. right. So, um, I, I wanted to start with a jolt of fear. A jolt? Fear, yes. Uh, I want to start with an official disclaimer. We are having fun here, and this is sort of art what we do. It's artistic performance. We show best of ourselves, best, and especially it's best when you know Jim is channeling. That's you know, especially something super duper. But we are not responsible for what we goes beyond. Our intentions are positive, but if someone hears what we say and harms themselves. You know, we can't really help you other than, you know, what we can do. We can block someone, we can change something, we can invite things, but that's where our capacity is limited. Our intentions are positive, but please take what we, ta take what we say, you know, smartly and with caution. It's, you know, we invite people to communicate with the spirits, but you can be harmed by spirits. If you invite bad spirits, you will be harmed. If you decide to leave your body and hang somewhere else, your body will suffer from not having your spirit with the body. So the disclaimer is, uh, take it as, as it is without uh, guarantee or warranty or take it with discretion. And things happen. We have been joined by borderline personality, almost mad people. And, you know, as we grow, that's guaranteed it will happen continuously. And truly, everybody is borderline mad. It's it's a nature of human existence. There is so much error programmed in us. Some days I just see, you know, I did it stupid error, like yesterday. I was showing someone, you know, you have to park here. That's a nice place. And when they park, I realized, you know, they knew that I didn't, they didn't need my, need my advice. They planned to park here, and why would they think that they would be stupid and not to think where they would, do they want to park? So, I mean, they, these stupid things happen. And um, uh, astrology, planets, moons, uh, this time of the year affects us. Mm -hmm. And some days mm -hmm. we become manic. Some days, manic meaning, I don't know if you know the word manic, psychiatric term meaning. Who is speaking? I, uh, I will mute everybody, I'm sorry. I need to mute because I'm hearing echo and, uh, and it's interfering. All right. Um, all right. Now, so someday, uh, so my mania is when you become very excited about something, focused on that, it's, it's a very good thing. I mean, all creative people, especially all uh, leaders like uh, Steve Jobs, they were manic most of the time. You know, manic is, is absolutely necessary to achieve something. Creative people, painters are manic. And 
I welcome mania. Mania is fun. Mania is a happy thing. Like you know, p people with epilepsy. Epilepsy is the thing where you have short circuit, very very strong to the level that your body collapses. People who have epilepsy, creative people, love it because before they collapse, they have uh, how do you call it uh, ecstasy. Ecstasy, like it's natural, they're ecstatic. They have connection to higher forces. They're very creative. This, you know, in this short periods of ecstasy, they get. I don't, don't advertise it. Don't try it at home, right? But you know, uh, that is part of creativity. Uh, and then when you when you're manic, uh, the the swing bag is called depression. Manic depression. Manic depression. And it's normal. Like normal people have this swing. It's just not. It doesn't go beyond the border. Manic doesn't become completely delusional, and depressive doesn't become completely suicidal. It's you know normal people are between and they kind of oscillate. It's normal. It is. It's done by intent. You know, or not. You know, the gods created it in our civilization. Our mm -hmm. collective consciousness created in our civilization, and so we become what we are. It is programmed in us. And schizophrenic means you are in multiple realities, switching between multiple realities. And and when you say I saw you yesterday, then people know that there was no way to see you yesterday. It was just in a different parallel timeline. So schizophrenic, or you know, there is multiple types of schizophrenic. But people with, with they don't know where they are. They 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 create multiple timelines and they oscillate between multiple timelines. And when they say people something which is not from their timeline, that people think they are delusional, but in fact you are just, uh, you don't know where you are. Uh, and there is lots of different other things. And some of that is very spiritual, but some of that is very detrimental to your physical life. If you cannot do your job, or you cannot do your family life, or you become aggressive and angry, then you're screwed up. So, the point is, People join us, and we all borderline, and uh, people start uh, inviting spirits, and it's your choice. Your choice is very respected. If you want to leave your body, you know nobody can stop you. But I urge you, please stay in your body. Please be successful. Integration. I mean, the main topic is integration. Um, I will mute everybody. I'm sorry. I'm still talking. Uh, uh, questions. We'll see. We'll talk about questions. So uh, integration. It's the key word. And uh, I got a message from through somebody, not no, not directly through some physical being, uh, that um, integration has to be done properly. You cannot just leave your body and say you're integrated. You have to be in your body. And I guess there are ma multiple flares of integration. And speak to your higher self. And soar, off, offer the service by choice to your higher self. And I would invite higher guidance through Jim to speak on the topic of integration. How best to integrate? Who do you want to serve? And it has to be by choice. But you have to be in your body. And your focus of attention it doesn't, it cannot be all the way, always there. You have to pay attention to down here. You know, what you do, you grab one hand or one leg grabs your, if you're like monkey, you have like a leg, like one leg of a monkey grabs the ground and one leg grabs the sky and you pull it together. That's integration. If you're just always there, like all of you, it's not right. You have to be sometimes down here. And I, I, I'm talking from my own experience. Sometimes I, I have to force my focus of attention right here right here, touch something. And, you know, healing is one of the, I, I preach, do healing in every way you can. When you heal, you're down here, you heal the bodies. All right? And that's the, the end of uh, introduction. Now, tomorrow we have a guest, Ray Hernandez, um, same time, 10 a.m., real 10, 10 a.m. on Sunday. And uh, he will speak about uh, his experiences and networking and uh, organization of uh, experiencers. That is wonderful. Uh, there were multiple requests. Some people want more questions, and some people 
I want something new for a change because questions become repetitive. And I agree with everything. I agree. We need to serve people and give people guidance and questions for free. And especially, I would still invite questions which are really urgent, like, like life changing questions. Like some urgent questions we can't, we can't wait. So I would still invite that. Uh, but we also want new, new information, new entities to come through Jim, and we want uh, some long-awaited contacts. Uh, old riser, we really want him. Why? Be because he's fun first, and second, he helps with something which others didn't help yet. He has this wonderful healing quality of laughter and grounding. I, he I think his laughter and humor is very grounded. We are so much pulled up that when he pulls a little bit down, it's still elevated, but it's, you know, what, let's define his vibration. All risers' vibration is much closer to the ground than others, but it's directed up. So that grounded up, down and up, I would define it like that. He is very healing and very servant to many. I find his I I'm coming to his uh, laughter and jokes much more often to than than to many other things. So I would uh, love to have old riser for another visit. Um, Pleiadians are invited to speak. Uh, we want to have them on on. Uh, on the air and ask them questions. Uh, Elohim, we request, we, you know, our attention is, is brought to Elohim and they remain in our focus of attention. Uh, cetaceans, which is a collective <laughs> definition of dolphins and whales and a few others, I invited to speak. I was somewhere and I'm now blanking. Yeah, uh, humans from uh, from up there. Any humans who are on alien side, alien side are invited, especially the ones from the colonies, because they know what to say. Max, how about anyone from the new ship? Says uh, Roy. Pronounce it in invitation. You know better what you want to say. Do an invitation, Sabrina. Of uh, what you want. Just repeat that. Okay. We would also like to invite anyone from one of the new ships that um, that came to help. Uh, or any of the, uh, or a ship that's around the European area as well. Yeah, and I also invite Melchizedek. Melchizedek is uh, in my, fo just came to my focus of attention and I'm interested. So, not necessarily in any order they, they like. So, uh, uh, and of course, our friends are welcome to to come through. Um, just just too many invitations. Maybe they can some some sort of do whatever do at their discretion how they feel it better. I mean, if something is important and the conversation is important, I wouldn't ask them to leave. I would continue speaking. So, but but uh, you know, whatever is better for the community. Um, so who is uh, people who have who speak through cell phone? They cannot participate in the in the chat. I think so. Uh, uh, let me ask now: Who has um, questions for the, uh, urgent questions for themselves and for from others? The diamond ray consciousness. Diamond ray. Diamond ray consciousness, the thirteenth skull, the adamant, and or the diamond skull. Uh, you invite them? Yes. Oh, I, I'm <clears throat> I'm completely open to them. Um, I feel there's others in the Hukula family that are being visited um, from the diamond ray, and it's a it's a different process, if you will. Um, I feel it bringing. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. It would be extremely helpful. Anyone from the Diamond Ray Collective. All right, nice. I, I picture this room full of entities taking a number and standing in line here. Yes. Yeah. So many, so many are uh, 
wanting to come. And so, I mean, you've invited so many. I, I have no idea who's going to come, okay? <laughs> the most official, the most Does official I, to the group. Just if I can pop in here, I just have a very general, probably small question. Yeah. Um, and I think Takur or Lakesh could probably answer it. So I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine with anybody who comes through anyway. I'll ask. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's not forever. It's just um, I want to alternate uh, the webinar, which goes as um, someone suggested, uh, thinking about talking about new important things, and webinars where we go back and we kind of just take regular questions, which are pretty standard but very important for people. Yes. So this webinar is kind of more into uh, new things. Or, or someone that can speak um, to the uh, integration, what you were talking about. Yes, right? yes, yes. Integration of third density and fourth density? Uh, no, it's, uh, oh, I need to define. Integration means your higher self being here. That's integration. You integrate the whole God into you, and you become God being, which is a good idea. And it's not possible because the whole God cannot fit in one body fully, but there can be a dialogue and there can be invitation. At least an in intention can be there. Your higher self, over soul, uh, you know, inviting it to be there here as much as possible. That sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm, there's so many things there. I'm just going to ask those that have the greatest messages to come first. Yes. Um, if there is anybody with a great message or good information for the group, or all those things that everyone asks for. Uh, yes. But I just feel that there's a lot of activity going on up there right now. It's like they've heard their, they've been invited, and it's like, woo! <laughs> so there's a group up there. There's a group up there wanting to come through. I don't know who's going to come through. So, um... But there is a lot of activity, and it's actually very tingly right now, so that's different. Yes. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. It's tingly, but it, it feels very tingly right now. Like, a lot of people are, like, going, me first, me first. But anyway, um, we'll see who comes first and second and third. We trust and our friends to, you know, to organize. I mean, I guess Fission is responsible and Tucker are kind of Yes, I don't know who. But... Let me do a little bit of, if there's any more questions, this will be the time before I do a meditation. Anybody? Questions are welcome. And please mute yourself, uh, Justin and Angela, just to remove the uh, feedback. Yes, and Caitlin. Thank you. Okay. I think it's fine. We can okay. Begin. okay, very good. I'm going to do meditation now. We'll see who comes. Um, there's a, a lot of invitations out there for a lot of different aliens, people, and all kinds of things, so we'll see who's, who's about. Wow, my head is spinning.
<clears throat> Hello. Is it old Razor? No, or I'm Douglas. Hey, Douglas. Hello, Hello Doc Nye, Thank for you. a short time to give you a little update on the, the colonies, such things as that. I've been there quite a lot lately because they're working on the the site to site transfers, and it's coming along nicely. But they're very profession, very very much into being perfect about it. So. Give them a little time. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but it will happen within a month, I believe. Nice. So um, is there any questions about that? I came here shortly to answer some questions about uh, the colonies. Can you speak more how that's going to happen, how we'll be going to be contacted and transported so we can be comfortable with that? They're, they're working on that right now about how to contact people ahead of time because it has to be very subtle but yet it has to be very it has to be something that you are sure you know what is happening so that is something they're working on now and it's part of the the last couple percentage points that hasn't been worked out yet but it will definitely be um, brilliant I'm sure so you're there much of the time right Lately, I've been here for four and five days, a couple times a week. And you're there still astrally, not physically. Yes. Uh huh. And you're aware of colonies of Gurkhitnir and Kenjin's colonies? I'm aware. Yes. Yeah. Tell me the summary numbers. Just you know, what's total number of humans and? Oh, I don't know that number, ah. but I could probably find it out. But I've been so busy with other things that that kind of thing just doesn't really interest me at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's more like the, the things that interest me right now are the things that are going to push the uh, push uh, this percentage point to the closest to 100% as we can. Uh, so what do you do for that? Actually, I do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I work with different people doing... Uh, actually, I'm more like a servant and a uh, go-getter and things of that nature, but they need a lot of those because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things being done at once. So, um, What's I, new there? Uh, do you see new aliens there? There are some new aliens here, yes. Um, they are not to be announced as yet, but they are. there are a couple of different species that have joined us with the teaching programs. So, um, yes. There are a couple different species, and they will be part of the language gym and the telepathic, um, telepathic part. I like that word, language gym, Sabrina. I really like it. Uh, so we're using it here as well, uh -huh. because it is an exercise for the mind and for the spirit and for for learning of uh, greater things other than just the language. The language is only part of what you're learning when you're learning the language gym. Do you understand? It's it's uh it's a spiritual part as well because it's lovely. Oh, please come with the questions. Y yes. Does anybody get physically affected um, up at the colonies and feel the effects of them back here? Oh, well, absolutely, absolutely. Anything that you experience in the colonies, especially if you're on, say, the exercise colony or whatever, it comes right back in and you feel like you've been exercising for hours, and sometimes you have. But um, you're also, when you're here and learning the tele telepathy part and the, uh, the parts that are other than that, you are also bringing that back into the body. And so sometimes we have noticed a couple people wake up with a little bit of a headache because they were overexerting their mind a bit. So um, we've we've learned how to deal with that. Thank you. It's, yeah, I woke up with my calves feeling like I've run like a marathon today. Yes. And it's very strange to walk up and not be able to even stand up properly. Oh, so, yeah. I understand. Yes. Yes, you did quite a bit of bicycling, so, or what they spinning, I think they call it. But anyway, um, thank you. Yes. Um, hello, Douglas. Yes. <laughs> um, I had an experience, and I feel it had something to do with the physical trips to the colonies, except 
the experience I had, it was kind of like coming back to my my room. Yes. Um, so I'm not going to get into the dream, but what was happening was I was talking to a few members from the colonies, and then suddenly I heard this beeping noise or this weird noise in my ear, my left ear specifically, and everything turned white, and and then it went black. And I thought I was under my covers in my room, like I thought I was under the blankets or something, but then the black faded to my, my wall. And ah. I literally felt like I was just being transferred somewhere, like being transported somewhere, or I disconnected or something like that. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. Actually, I do not think, I know for sure, actually, that Grok Fikneer has not transported anyone physically yet. However, mm -hmm. can Jean and his um, uh, can Jean and his colonies have been experiencing the experimenting with the same sort of thing, and they might have taken you? But I would have to check on that. But I would not think that they would do that unless they were a hundred percent certain, or at least close to a hundred percent certain, that you would not be harmed. But you were not harmed, so. I could check into that for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but that does sound like what would possibly happen. Well, it, it, at first it was just kind of scary because I, I just felt such a change in the energy and the dimensions. It kind of was making my heart beat really fast, and I was like, oh my god. Well, <laughs> I myself have not been uh, transported that way, so I would not know the exact effects of it. So. At this point, I would say that it was someone else or it was a dream. But I would have to check that into that for you. But that sounds very much a possible that it was an actual site-to-site -site transfer. Really? That's it, sounds, yeah. it sounds quite um, like what it would, might be like, I would think. I could ask someone, but there's, there's a lot of activity going on here, and I cannot yes, that's ask okay. anyone at the moment. But I'll mm -hmm. get back to Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Many people asked about um, videos to be released from uh, from the Colony 3 to the YouTube, and obviously they disappeared, but uh, I, I suggested that uh, maybe they can release something unidentifiable, something very, uh, very human, which only we can know that it is from the Colony, and if it, for others it would look like just an innocent human video. Uh, do you know any progress on that? Um, there is some progress on that, actually, but um, there's subliminal. There are some videos available that have subliminal text in them. I do not suggest that you go out and find them. If you are going to find them, you will find them. This is how they are set up. They send the individuals that they want to see them to these particular sites. Do you understand that? It's it's by choice that they send them to certain people for certain different reasons. And some of these people are not part of Human Colony at all, but will become part of Human Colony at a later date. Uh, the reason for them sending it out this way is because they need a stronger base here in Human Colony for s some different ideas. I'm sh the base is getting much stronger, which is good, but it is still not strong enough for them to test a couple of different videos because uh, it's still too much, too thin. Uh, people can be affected by a direct contact. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to be sort of, trying to say it in a nice way, but um, there's still too few of you. That you could be... in picked out individually and uh, possibly abused by government officials or whatever. So if the base is much broader, if it's bigger, then uh, they wouldn't be able to find as many of you. Yeah, they wouldn't be interested in finding us. Correct. It would be already too wide of the audience. Yes. Correct. Yes, you yeah, understand. Perfect. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's why I suggest, you know, make some popular cartoons even on I mean for you when you have an interface between the mind and the, whatever computer system you can create cartoons just with your mind I know the alien technologies could do that so make some innocent cartoons send it to the YouTube and then let us watch them. Yes. pardon me pardon me actually 
I've been waking up on um, <laughs> the mornings lately and seeing on Cartoon Network different cartoons um, where different blasts of light will be in the shape of different type of stars with different colors within it. Um, yeah. Certain characters that represent the other side, the two sides of the coin that decide to walk the middle line of the coin, if you will. Yes. Um, there's a lot of this going on, especially in cartoons. I notice um, a lot of um, exploration or idea. I'm muted again. Well, why? Oh, he speaks for about an hour in a, in a row. I mean, he already asked the question. Now he just repeats it many times. Okay. Um, yes. Um, there is many different areas of television and things of that nature that. Uh, have these subliminal messages in them. However, they're a lot of them for the children, yes. Uh, I'm not sure how to speak about this. One moment. There are subliminal messages in the cartoons. You are absolutely right. And there are light beings that are moving around in those areas. The creators of the cartoon are not aware of what's happening there. So uh, there's other areas of television and radio and things of that nature that do, do have the subliminal messages in them. And um, it will continue to be that way. But it does not always affect everyone. You have to understand they're aimed at a particular audience. So. Next, oh, you you think? I I have to go. There oh. are so many people waiting. I I cannot stay. All right. So um, thank you very much for being with us. Come more often, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming, thank Douglas. What again? Thank you. Say hi to James. Thank you, Douglas. Much love. Bye. Have a good day. Oh, you're quite welcome. When I had said that I had been to the mountain top and I had seen the other side, it was a moment of channeling. It was a time when I connected with many beings on the other side. It was a time when spirit was close. My objective with that speech was to bring destiny to the people was to bring the light down to you. And I found myself being lifted out of my body and understanding what was to happen, but not in the way that it was to happen, but yet giving myself over to the fact that it was going to happen. I could see on the expressions of the faces, that there was some kind of hope that was being born in them that was not there before. I was seeing the light in their eyes that had not been there before. I could see in my family's eyes a light that had not been there before, but also the understanding that what I was doing was very dangerous and very much a sacrifice. And that is here what I've come to say is about sacrifice. Yes. I sacrificed many, many things on this planet to get where I was in the afterlife. 
Do you understand that? Yes. My family took many sacrifices because I was away from them and I had important things that I had to plan. And that was a sacrifice. I sacrificed my time and my efforts to make sure that the words and the messages and the people were taken care of, not only in physical and spiritual, but mind and body as well. They had to understand that the caring for the human race, for the caring the God brought to the human race, and I still speak to him as God. Yes. Is more than just physical or spiritual, emotional. It is an entirety unto them is a learning experience and sacrifice. We all must sacrifice. And some of you here will find that you must sacrifice for those things that you believe, for those things that are closest to you, that resonate with you as well, you understand. When you say sacrifice, you mean making a choice. Yes. I mean making a choice for the right, no matter what anyone says or does. Because those are the things that will set you apart from the rest of the world. Because if you are sacrificing for good, to bring things that are great to the world, to bring things that will enlighten and bring light to the world, then you will understand your sacrifice. Do you understand that? You don't mean to kill poor I do animals. not mean killing. I mean giving of self. Yes. Giving yes. of self. There is no killing necessary. They may kill you, but you will not die. And it is letting go of opportunities. If you make a choice, opportunities, some opportunities are sacrificed. Sacrifice is what it is. If you want to do this, but you know that it would be better for everyone to do this, and you do the thing that helps everyone, that is a sacrifice. My family sacrificed greatly. I sacrificed greatly. And that was the message I came to give you. That your sacrifice is important. Not only to the world, but to yourself. Yourself as well. Because the edification of the spirit within you, as you dedicate yourself, to a higher cause, brings about a manifestation of peace that you will not understand. You will not understand how peaceful your sacrifice and your understanding of what is going to happen will be. It will not matter. What will matter is that the light, love, joy, spirit is transferred. That will be the importance. That will be the importance. What was your name when you lived here? Martin Luther King. Hmm. Yes, thank you very much. How do you see God from now? For now, at the moment? God is God. You do not see him as a person but you see him as everything. Brother King, thank you infinitely for coming through with this confirmation. I have been seeing your dream greatly. Thank you for this confirmation. Thank you. I will go now, and someone else will come. The short message was about sacrifice and the things that you know to be true, and worshiping in a true way that resonates with your whole being and not just with others who want to be with you. But your whole being will draw those people to you that understand that you are truly who you are and that your sacrifice is for the betterment of mankind and not for yourself.
Have a wonderful, blessed day. Thank you for coming, and we welcome you if you wish to come another time. Thank you. But right now, that was the only message I had for you. Thank you. I am Solaket, hey. Indian from the North Star. Hey, Solaket, welcome. Thank you for coming through. Some wish to speak to Pleiadian. Yes. And why is that? Uh, Pleiadians are members of Gurkfitnir. They do a lot with us, and we never spoke to them on our channel. You speak with them in your private sessions. This is their best effort. However, I am not of the same sect of the Pleiadians that Grukvignir is. Ah. The Grukvignirian Pleiadians have many interesting and diverse beliefs about speaking to humans. I do not, however, share that belief. What is that belief? So they don't want to speak publicly? They would rather help on a one-to-one -one basis. Ah. All right. Ask your questions. Do you have any information about the new block that was inserted into the Georgia Guidestones in America? And who is responsible or who is connected with it? One moment. Uh, this is information that is new to me because I'm not from your world. Thank you. Infinitely. The guide block. Saka Shotopa. Yakawataike Shot. It was partly it was actually a more than one group of people that were in charge of this or responsible for this. There was a connection between the Council of Nine and between an earthly group that will not be named to bring this about. Do you understand? Yes, completely. And the 2014 is an indication of the beginning, the birth of something, correct? It is the birth of some things, yes. And the birth will be obvious later. Hi. Uh, what is a guide block? That is hard to explain. I am not familiar with your human language enough to explain it. But let me tell you that it is a powerful thing. It is in alignment with the Polaris star, which I have been getting many confirmations and synchronicities in regards to the North Star. I live near the North Star Resort in Lake Tahoe. It I've is, been surrounded by the North Star my whole life. It does many things. It is a transmitter, a receiver, but it also is many other things other than that as well. It is a... I am not to say that. You are to find out what other things that it does, but it does have a connection with your stargates as well. Oh. So you're Pleiadian, not from Pleiades. You're just the same race living on a polar star? Yes. I am not part of the Grukvignir yes. Pleiadians, but I am related to them very closely. Uh-huh. So I can speak to you and know of their understandings because we are not that far separated. There are some major 
philosophical differences. There are major moral differences, but other than that, our intellects are based on the same principles. Do you live on planets? Yes, of course. So your civilization lives on how many planets? Only two here at this time. Uh huh. And um, oh, I guess I invite more questions. I have tons of questions, but um, well, well, who is first? There is a line of people. Hurry, please. Are you a part of the Gabriel has a question. I, I'm wondering about, I had the Pleiadian being in my bedrooms, physical, some years ago, and I don't know. Those, those beings were from the Grukvikmerian Alliance, and they were friendly and were studying you for your future, yes. Who's next? Next. Who is this? The day is next. She's muted. Oh, Bradley? Speak. Okay, Kim, you can go. Okay. Um, hello, this is Kim. Thank you for hello. coming. Um, I just have a very quick question. I believe there is a lot of what we call space junk around our planet. I'm just thinking globally around Earth right now. Yes. I'm I'm wondering is this interfering with your presence? Um all ETs, all species? No, your space in any junk way, shape or form. Your space junk will clear up within the next hundred years. It does not bother us at all, it's way too weak to bother us, to, to interfere with us. We can just turn it off at will if we'd like and have done so at times and moved it out of the way at times, changed its uh, changed its rotation around your Earth, if, if you will, changed its orbit, as you call it. We can do many things with it. It does not bother us. It's, it is a clutter for most part, that will be cleared up within the next hundred years. Most of it will fall to Earth and uh, be done. And some of it will break up. Some of it will be hit by meteors. There's many ways that it will be done with. Yes. It, it, and okay. Your, your, your uh, transmitters and satellites will be orbiting and be closer to the moon than they are to your planet eventually. Okay. It would be much a Thank broader you very much. signal. Yes, it would be a much broader signal and much more powerful. The question from Bradley. He doesn't Thank have you. a microphone. Thank you, Kim. Yes. Uh, I have heard Bradley says I have heard that Pleiadians have a tool system which can read unconscious, unconscious mind, and therefore your future. Is it true? Are you talking about the, a mind reading machine? Uh, yeah. Telepathy is a mind meld institution, if you would have it, between two or more Pleiadians or those who are telepathic. However, a machine was made earlier on when telepathy was young to enhance it and to talk to species that were not quite as telepathic. But now that machine has been put aside because our telepathic abilities are much stronger and we are able to uh, find those centers in other species that we can unite with. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So we do not any longer need that machine. However, it is still in existence. It is therefore sometimes for children who sometimes cannot learn telepathy as fast as their friends. Thank you. Um, can you introduce Pleiadians? Uh, what is the origin of Pleiadian race in that general? That would take a long time. And I'm not, I'm not here for that. But uh, we are ancient as well. 
learning about our existence and how we came to be is not important. What is important is that we help you rise and we help you move forward. How much is your civilization, civilization is involved with uh, Earth at the moment? About 20%. 20% of what? 20% of our civilization is interested in what is going on in Earth. And we have some ships around your planet. Oh, wow, thank you. Interesting. But not many at this time. How many what, what people dimension? are in solar system? Uh, two questions. First question is how many people of your civilization are currently in solar system, roughly? About 2,800. 2,800? Yes. That's many. No, wow. not very many. Oh. What's well, the other question? Second question, what is your dimension? If we, we, are, we are fourth dimension. Uh, all right, so what is their goal of this 2,800 people? What do they want? They're not all working with... You asked if they were in the solar system. Yes. They're not all working with Earth. Yes. They're working with your moon. They're working with Mars. They're working with the Venus. And they're working with many planets around uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Many small moons, as you would call them. Uh, what's their overall goal in the solar system? Some of it is mining on the in the in the Saturn and Jupiter area. Some of it is maintaining contact with those beings of our species that are monitoring the Earth process. Some of them are uh, working on a base on the Moon and a base on Mars as well. On Venus, it is a different story because there is a race of people that is interesting to us, so we are uh, learning contact with them. So this presence in solar system wouldn't be unique. You would have hundreds of other stars where your civilization would yes, also have. Yes, we have many. Uh -huh. We are very interested in other species. We are very interested in peaceful endeavors, but we also have those endeavors of uh, bringing resources to ourselves where there are uninhabited planets that have good resources, minerals, and things of that nature. Uh, what is What are your looks? How tall are you? How would you look to us? I'm about seven and a half feet tall. Uh -huh. I have a bluish gray skin. I have light colored hair. I have a physique that's larger than yours. Jag has a question. Uh huh. Jag. Speak. Greetings. Greetings. Since uh, our scientists have uh, found out that uh, electromagnetic fields such as those created by cell phone towers disrupt our DNA structure. Yes. My question is, from your perspective, is there a need for us to do something to balance that out? And if so, what would be your suggestions? Yes, you will eventually get used to these interferences and, and bring them into your telepathic understanding because they are part of what is going to um, give a charge to your telepathy. Even though they say that they are harmful to you now and are causing disruption, your body will soon overcome that and use it as part of your telepathy. You will be able to hear signals. You will be able to hear the sounds of things that the, the towers and, and the wavelengths are giving out. Do you understand that? You're already starting to do that. Yes. The reason for this is you are, have been living in an electromagnetic field for many, many centuries, all your lives exactly. Since the creation of the planet, there's been magnetic fields around you, correct? You are now correct. becoming part of the electromagnetic field, and they will not be able to disrupt you 
that much because your electromagnetic field is much stronger than this man created item it is much more a part of you than anything that man can create of course they can create something very very strong that would disrupt it but they're not going to do that but these these smaller powers will become integrated with yours do you understand yes thank you for yes, yes. and I'm underlying thinking... your answer it seems that the idea of mutation is also implicit in what you just said. We are in a, a period of mutation, physical mutation. Of course. Yes. Do you see, yes. like, Thank you. Thank you. do you understand that the, the elect these fields that they have created do not only affect humans, but affect everything on the Earth? And that is partially the reason why some species are dying and trees and plants and some species of bees and things of that nature have disappeared they cannot handle it it is yes. strong for them as well as the chemical mass that is being accumulated in the atmosphere it's too strong for some species but you will adapt I have a question um, Zechariah described Pleiadians on Earth eh, as huge 20 feet tall giants. That is a different species of Pleiadians. Ah. We are all big compared to humans, but there are some even larger than us. But they are less social. Ah. All right. Any more questions? Yes. Hello. This There's is Hayam. Not much time. Thank you very much for your visit. Hi, yeah. on. All right. Um, Speak. Well, yeah, I. Um, yeah, yeah. So your species hasn't had the need to mutate, evolutionary. You have been quite the same. You haven't had the need to mutate. Am I right? Not necessarily true. In our earlier po portions of our existence, we were somewhat taller. We have mutated to a smaller size. Okay, okay. That and is we... the, big, the biggest change. Yes. It is because we have been to different worlds with different gravitational pools and different, and we've stayed here for many centuries, many, many centuries, and it, over time, gravitational pull does have an effect on evolution. So we are just slightly smaller by about eight inches than we used to be. Okay, interesting. I have a uh, question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. Continue. Uh, we have uh, we have a probability that we are going to become a hybrid species. You are already becoming hybrid species. You are already requesting it to actually maintain a higher source of survivability. Is that a word? I'm not sure, but that fits. It, yes. You will be able to survive in a greater way with your hybrid selves. As humans progress in their evolution, more hybridization is necessary for them to maintain a high quality of health. The reason for this is because health is being destroyed exponentially on your, whatever the word is, exponentially on your planet. Yes. And so therefore, hybridization is necessary for your prolonging of your life. Okay, so that is due to our, um, our, the impact we have had on our on ourselves. Yes, you have done many harms to yourselves, and their hybridization will keep you alive. Okay. So we, this okay. is not something that you, that the species around you speak about much, but it is true that they believe that hybridization is the key to your survival in the future. Not at this moment, but in the future. 
So if we don't hybridize, what would happen? You would probably become very weak and spindly and not be able to survive many of the things that are coming in your earth changes. Because the earth will change. As the sun grows weaker, the, the rotation of your planet grows less. This is thousands and thousands of years and even possibly a million years. However, we look, we look that far ahead. We see what you could become, and it's not pretty. But hybridization will strengthen your gene pool. I see. Thank you. Jack, did you have yeah. one more question? Yes, and it's precisely on that on that same idea. Um, regarding DNA infusions from different species, these have been, uh, let's say, suggested or opened up by uh, elements of the human colonies. It has been specifically stated that a way to balance out reptilian uh, infusions would be Pleiadian infusions. Do you agree with that? What's your insight and perspective on that idea? It would be Pleiadian, Octorian, uh, Syrian, those would be balancers. Fendorian, Sasani, oh, Chikani, those would be balancers for reptilian. Yes, thank you very well. And in a practical terms, would you? Uh, see individuals that would be open to receive such infusions as helping in uh, furthering relations between those species, acting in some kind of a, in a bridge of there, some kind between those different species. Of, yes, there's already a percentage of you that could mate with another species successfully due to hybridization and a few other things. Do you understand that? Yes, there is I was. Yes, uh, it would appear that you Yil would be the number one easiest to procreate with, as well as there are two people on your colony that would be able to mate with Lyrans successfully, and perhaps a third. Yes, I was not. Yes. I was not suggesting in those terms, although that information is also relevant for those who are interested. I was asking, I wasn't clear, I apologize. I was asking in terms of diplomatic relations, so ah. that the people that become hybridized with those DNAs could act in capacities that would further the diplomatic relationships and bring forth the higher levels of unity and understanding be between those different species. Yes, I agree. And yes, that is happening. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes. My name is Sarah. Sarah. Um, I have a question. What about those humans who are who have already the different species in their DNA? They have a head start without hybridization. They have a head start on the human race. Like they were already born with it, not implemented into it l later on. Yes, they have a head start on the human race because this is the, this is your future, is that your diversity will come become even more diverse. You are the most diverse race of species of people in the universe at this time, and you will become even more diverse. But it will be a beautiful and wonderful thing for the universe because you will be able to relate and understand and mate with any species of your choosing for the most part. When that time comes, the universe will rejoice because there will be much more standardization. I wanted to bring the question about integration of higher self. Um, I guess it is uh, a process of a million of years to integrate higher self into the body. 
Do you have advice for us? How can we approach that? The higher self is part of who you are and what you do and when you do it. You do not always know when the higher self speaks or you do not know always the higher self. However, the higher self is with you. And do not say that it is unimportant, but it is very important that eventually all of you will know who your higher self is because they are not the average person. They are someone of notoriety that have been around for millions of years. From Did other I... planets or for maybe even your own. Did I channel my higher self this week? I was channeling someone. You may have channeled, I am not aware. Just a moment. You got a glimpse, yes. I was consciously channeling something. Yes. You got a glimpse that was very small, a very small vision of who your higher self really is. I feel completion of my integration of my higher self in its completeness. Brother Frantishek was able to put his hand, astral, his astral hand, on my true oneness. Yes. Want to get you, have, you have met and assimilated your higher self into a, a manifested personal contact. There are still parts of the higher self that will make itself known to you at a later date. They are much more ethereal, much more connected to things higher than understanding right now. Do you understand? Yes, I am completely open in the strongest allowance to this in this perfect moment. Yes. So I maintain with you that you have brought in some very valuable aspects of higher self, but there's still more to come. Thank you infinitely. Are there any questions? you have on your side, may we be of assistance to you and your species at this time? We are studying you and have studied you for many centuries. You are still very different. There are so many things. Your diversity is very unique. That is all I can say. We can learn from you, but I will come to you individually because each question that I have comes to an individual person because of a trait or something that they have done that we do not understand. Do you understand what I'm coming from? So it would yes, be... Yes, and I consent, I consent to your personal contact with me if you wish to do so in assistance to you in whatever capacity I may have. Good. I, I will ask... I will not ask these questions because some of them are very personal. I must talk to you one on one. Yes. You said that some of the species of animals on our planet are leaving and have disappeared. Yes. Is this the same for the elementals as well? Is this In some cases, elementals are affected by vibrational and sonic in impressions. Yes. But at this point, none of the elementals have left, but they are considering it. Is there something we can do to help? I believe they will not leave, and let me tell you why. Their concern for the Earth is great, and without them, they feel that there is no future for mankind because they are helping nature to uh, assimilate some of these darker energies, chemicals, and sound waves, energetic waves, and so their presence is absolutely necessary. However, it affects them in some ways health-wise. But they are learning that their health can be returned. Mother Earth has given them ways to connect that is 
essential to their existence. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you speak a little bit about the uh, in integration with the higher self and how to best accomplish that? First, you must be third dimensional because that is how you were born. You must be who you are before you can find out who you are going to be. Because the higher self has much to do with the future and with much to do with who you are now pulling you up through the dimensions. Do you understand? So you must learn your basics first before you can learn higher dimensions. So, you on this colony, as you call it, are learning your higher dimensions now. And the higher self will help you integrate. But there are many other ways. Intention meditations, being able to speak to the entities around you, being able to connect to the earth in a way that brings you forward in your vibration so that you can move up. There's no other way. Once you, once you have connected fully to the third dimension, there is no other way to connect but up. Do you understand that? Yes. So connect, and then you will have to move up because that is the only place left to go. Okay, and from uh, your perspective, um, what is the best way we could help the Earth with uh, the Earth changes and everything that's happening? Give your energies to the Earth. All of you have energies in your hands and your feet. If you walk upon the Earth and put your hands down, facing the Earth, palms to the Earth, your energy will feed the planet. Walk okay. in your bare feet. The bottoms of your feet will feed the planet. It is a small feeding, but if enough of you do it, it will help. Okay, thank you. All right, I must go now. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. You're an interesting chair. Thank uh, you for coming. Goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. You too. Namaste. Likewise. Touche. We invite you more. Also in our private sessions. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome Hi, back. Jim. Hi. Hello, Hi. Jim. That was amazing, Jim. Thank you so much, brother. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, welcome back. I feel like uh, back. I feel like the parade hasn't finished yet. No. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> I feel like it either. <laughs> oh my God. There must be a lot of them then. Jeez. There is quite a few people out there, entities that want to talk, but I don't know if I can handle them all right now. Ooh, give me a little break. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring a few, Jim. Just let a few, a few come through. I guess a break, it's in order. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Um, were they very helpful? I, I get the feeling that they were very strong personalities this time. Yes, they were. Yes. Did you uh, know Martin Luther King came through? Did you oh know? Oh my that? God! Hey, I told you. I, I've been saying that for about the last week, haven't oh I? Oh my goodness! Seen dream. I've been getting contacted by Martin Luther King. He came through and told me that was a past life of mine. He was assassinated on April fourth. I was born on April fourth. That was crazy, a, man. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know anything about that at all. Yeah, I know. We haven't talked at all for a minute. So yeah, that was that so, was I started, I started crying. I started I, crying. I was bawling over here. I was crying. Really? I was bawling. I thought it was Jesus at first. <laughs> no, I knew no, exactly I knew it was him right away. Oh yeah. my goodness. I just thought it was Jesus. I about his dream and then 
And then that's when I, it, it immediately clicked with me. And I was like, it was just, uh, it brought so much peace and serenity to listen to. So it, I know his, I heard his message was on what, sir? sir sacrifice. What? sacrifice. 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 Wow, who better to talk about that than him? Um, oh, yeah. my goodness. Yep. Mm. Oh, so he came through. The, his message was strong then. That's good. I'm glad. Yes. Um, there is still more that want to come through. Oh, my goodness. There's Let's just chat for five minutes and then... In the yeah, moment. there's still more that want to come through for sure. Okay. I don't know. Let's ask them to compact their message into... And the one being, if you will, for us. Yeah. Idea. Yes. Um, I would gold riser. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Something like, a little. No. Yeah. Old riser. Yeah. I, 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 like that. Yes. I think if if even if the different entities could speak to the uh, integration of higher self and. Uh, other entities without uh, losing your grounding and, and losing you yes know, yes that you would are. be that would yep. be very good because yep. we will get different perspectives on that they're bombarding me uh, I've never felt <laughs> like this before I yes. feel bombarded with thought processes other than my own ask fission <laughs> to control it let yes, let fission uh, decide <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I have the same problem. The gatekeeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want gatekeeper to keep the gate. Yeah. Jim, I had the same problem earlier in the week. There was absolute chaos going on in my head. And I needed to channel. God bless Sabrina. She was there for me. I was able to get it all in some kind of order. Oh, <laughs> if, it, if that's what you're feeling, <laughs> well, you know I totally what? understand. Why, Take a break. That's why human colony is so unusual, is that you can help each other. It's the only place for a call. I mean, only place where you can actually talk to each other other than a channeler. Mm. Um, and that makes it really beautiful, I think. I I cry when I think about how valuable the service of the actual colony is. So, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. How is the weather out there? <laughs> <laughs> the nice weather is sunny here. The weather. <laughs> we finally got some rain in Tahoe. We finally got some rain in Tahoe. So, uh, good job. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. so I would say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, we have uh, lots of yellow trees. Finally, after yesterday, lots of trees became yellow. We have the fall. And Kim, you have a spring coming, right? Kim? I have a what, sorry? You have spring. 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 Yes, yes. We're in spring and our earth has ch uh, our earth. Our season has changed like bang on time. Yeah, I feel so jealous. I want the flowers are out. <laughs> I want spring. I'm coming to Australia. So, yeah, <laughs> well, bring it on. You know, Australia, bring it on. <laughs> Australia is one of the places that I've always wanted to go. That and uh, New Zealand. So. Oh, New Zealand is lovely. I'd like yes, to go you would to love Australia it, yeah. and New Zealand. Those are two places. <laughs> and England. I've always wanted to go to England. So, um, how, how is the weather in Europe? <laughs> in England, not very sunny. It's I love that though. Here. In, Port Thanks, in Portugal, bright and sunny. Oh wow, wonderful! See, I'd like to go to Europe. I've been to Italy and Greece and Egypt. You've mm. been to Egypt? That's so yeah. great! Wow, that's actually yeah. awesome. In this life. Yes, in this life. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt very <laughs> Way. It was very, very hot, but I wasn't affected. It was more weird. So, Are you ready? I, yeah, so Goodbye. They're, <laughs> they're, just, they're, just, they're torturing me. But it's not a bad torture. I, uh, like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, whoever is uh, fishing, let, let, let fishing decide. I, can... I know the feeling, Jim. It's okay. I get that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same thing. Same thing.
backed by popular demand, the crap body. <laughs> oh, welcome, uh, Razor. Yeah. I come to talk to you about sacrifice. All right. Because I heard him speaking about sacrifice. Oh, you people don't know what sacrifice is, really. I mean, you're all cushy and everything. You know, you're all you live in pretty much luxury compared to what we live in sometimes. Well, we're, we're a combative society sometimes, so we live in a little less comfort than you do. We like things a little bit more minimalistic, if you know what I mean. So, I, if you have a question about sacrifice, let me know. Cause, yes, uh, yes. So, how much of self-sacrifice would you recommend to us? All of it. All of it. Because you guys, if I, I understand where you're coming from, really. I, we we don't really care that you're in a cushy situation. That doesn't bother us at all. Uh, but you do have to learn to sacrifice for your friends. Sometimes it becomes all about you, you know what I mean? And you don't even realize that it's like me, 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 me. So keep in mind that other people are there too and need your help. But you know what? You you guys have come a long way. It's much better than it was. All right, ask me a question. Uh, Brother, okay. I'd like to offer my body to you if you would choose to leave your consciousness with Jim. Uh, all right. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Well, is your body bigger than Jim's? It's, it's very strong and very diamond. It's a diamond, but put it that way, very strong. Oh, so that I'll have to squeeze into a diamond? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's even harder yet, I think. But anyway, I'm, Old right I'm, I'm squeezing it into a marshmallow, and it's bad enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want something oh, strong, when you're going to get... Can I just clarify something? Yeah. I I believe your name is Grindle. Grindle, yes. Is that correct? Yes, I'm Grindle, yes. Yes. How okay, you, thank you. Did I tell you that? You you did tell me that, yes. Ah, oh, all right. Yes. And that's how you know. Yeah, that's how I know. I'm very comfortable with Grindle. <laughs> I love the story of Grindle. And... Well, let me tell you about sacrifice. Yes. When I was a human in the human body, I had to sacrifice these good lucks for that. So the other thing is, <laughs> the other thing is, I had to sacrifice all my ways as a reptilian to fit into your society. However, there was some cool stuff, but like I liked the drinking games; they were pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> they didn't affect me much. I just got to watch all these drunk guys make fools of themselves. It was hilarious. So <laughs> that's interesting. Was, Alcohol doesn't affect you. Nah, it didn't affect me at all. I pretended like I was like, oh yeah, it was old. But nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. It, it it couldn't touch me. But these guys became idiots. It was. <laughs> Oh, gosh. But that was a sacrifice for me because <laughs> if I was back in my planet, I would have actually gotten drunk and, with the stuff that I could drink. But but there, <laughs> I guess I sacrificed getting drunk to watch crazy people. So I, it was oh, good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, people say that you create your reality, and if you create reality, why do you need to create a sacrifice in the reality? Because it builds character. Oh, of course. It builds character and it builds it builds a sense of community in many ways. Do you understand that? Sacrifice builds community. <laughs> and honor and strength and all that stuff. So it builds a community. Do you understand how sacrifice can build a community? Sure. Sure. So sure. give me your cupcakes. Yeah. So give me all your food and sacrifice, and so you'll be better. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> what you have to do is be yourselves when you sacrifice, though. It can't be out of 
Oh, I gotta give. Uh, no, you gotta give it willingly. It has to be from the heart. It has to be willingly, and you can't miss it when it's gone. Do you know what I mean? You can't like sit around and go, "Oh, why did I do that?" No. <laughs> you. It has to be genuine. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You could give all you want, and it won't matter. It has to be genuine from the heart, and and you know caring. Although, <clears throat> although I'd rather fight in a war, but it's it's something you have to do. Yeah, I but what if you already do that? Like, what 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 does that make you already if you do it? It makes you stronger, and strength is important. Strength is important. I sacrificed many things for my fellow officers. I did. Mm -hmm. You mean as, as a human? Or as a human and as a reptilian as well. I'm a very respected older gentleman. So, <laughs> I mean, they may make fun of me sometimes for coming here and squeezing into this marshmallow, but it's, <laughs> it's what I got to do sometimes, you know. So, yeah. All right, sir. What so kind of reptilian are you? Why wow, too many people talking at once? Wow. What type of reptilian are you? Sort of green. <laughs> That's such a help. I'm green. Species. I'm the one right in the middle. There's there's five reptilian races around the earth. And we're the ones that are most medium. <laughs> oh, you what mean, does that the, mean? Like, like the one that picked me up and was choking me when I was astral projecting? I guess that could be... That's medium well, What do you mean? We were choking you? Yeah, I, I guess he got mad at me because I, I was mad he was in my house, so I was just trying to kick him out, and you know, he just... Don't never like, try to kick out a reptilian, they'll choke you. He wanted me to be in his... He wanted me to go in his ship, and I was like, hell no, and he was like, okay, I guess oh, I'm going to just pick you up. You would have had a great time. You would have had a great time. The ships are great. You know, you have a few uh, grubs and a couple insects. And then... Grubs? Uh, <laughs> <it's> yummy. <laughs> oh, oh, my. I said no. oh, for you, we'll dip them in chocolate or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, uh, Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I'm getting a new puppy. Well, I already have it kind of in a sense. And it, it has to be a really good name. It has to be like, bam, like a really good, like, kick-ass name. So, you seem pretty badass and like a warrior type. So, what would you name the puppy? What's Shit. the name? Shit. <laughs> what? Call him Shithead, just like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, what's the dog do more? I can't believe in shit. That's what I'm saying. 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 Oh, my gosh. The neighbors might not like it. I already do that to my pets anyway, so oh. it's not really different. Oh, well, then you have to try. Let's try a strong but puppy-like name. I'll go... Uh, let me think. <laughs> uh, Furbone. I don't know. F furbone? <laughs> furbone? I don't know. <laughs> You're Furbone. Yeah, that would be good. I like that. Or <laughs> <laughs> has a question. Uh, if you... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, this body Hi. <laughs> Are you guys part of the Greek Fikneer? And uh, are you in the hybridization program? We could be counting. If you want hybridization from us, we'll give it to you. But we're not in the Greek Fikneer program. They sort of think we suck. So uh, <laughs> we don't, we're really not there with them yet. They're, they're nice people, I guess, but they just don't understand that you... They don't have the honor, the strength, the stability, the... The attitude that brings forth all the good stuff. You know what I mean? They're just they're they're yes. Namby pamby. Yes. Just can, I, can I ask 
ask you something. Are the are the uh, reptilians still uh, giving DNAs to people? Um, only without? if they ask. Only okay. if they ask. Only if they ask for. It. That's the big rule now. Only if you ask for it. So, gotta ask for it. So, what uh, person would so get? What? They get an infusion of your DNA. They get. They get to be cool. Because <laughs> we're. Would this assist in physical manifestation of material things? Well, you won't grow scales or anything like that, but you'll you'll definitely feel much stronger. You'll be a lot more aggressive, let's put it that way, and your mind will be focused on more aggressive things sometimes. You know what I mean? Like like uh, breaking up a fight, that would be fun, you know? Like, like you want to get in the middle there and punch them both a little bit, so yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> but, but I would I would argue that uh, a lot of humanity has that. Yeah, a lot of humanity has that in a nandy pandy sort of way. But yes, there are some really strong humans, but then there's some all these. They say they're strong and they do all these things that show that they're brave and strong, but it's it's not focused in their mind as to what they're actually doing. They're, they're not focused on honor and understanding. They're just like, get the job done. You know what I mean? Uh, I've faced this in the military a lot. Uh, they're just like, get the job done. But they're not going like, for honor and glory. and have, yeah, No, it, it, a lot of people do not understand what honor is or strength. They think that they're strong, but they're just following orders. So, yes and no. I have to say yes and no on that. Okay. Yes and no. Can you speak about anger yes. management? What would, what would be... <laughs> wow. Anger management? Yes. What does it need to be managed for? So the more anger, the better? No, not necessarily, but if you're if you're an angry person, why manage it? I mean... You gotta, you gotta let it out, or it'll kill you. Uh huh. So anger management means like, all right, don't yell at your mother when she finds your magazines or whatever. So. <laughs> just don't be bad. You know, you can't not be bad. You have to be bad. So, but you just have to do it in a more friendly sort of way. You don't call her like names and stuff. Just say, all right, yeah. Can you speak about suicide? Uh, you don't do it. Suicide's not to be done. Doesn't that's not honor, that's not strength. That's wimping out. That's 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 totally the opposite of everything I stand for. We're here to live, be strong, honorable communicative, sacrificing. If you kill yourself, you give that all away. So is there is there such a thing as too much of a sacrifice? Uh, I don't know what it, it would be. Well, I, well, you sacrifice your life. That's, that would be the greatest sacrifice. But you know what? It's not too great in some situations. It's not too great. Grind not I recently threw away the old ideas of myself and sacrificed the unbeneficial energies that were attached to this being yeah. so to completely integrate with my higher self, J.C. Ibarra L. And I would like to thank you because since meeting you, I have felt your strong energies, and this is assisting me in this process and I just infinite unconditional gratitude and appreciation thank you yeah yeah you're welcome I I I feel your strength but you know I, I, I have to say I have to I, I just can't grasp all of the things that you go through for no reason at all in my opinion I'm like oh jeez Forgive me, the marshmallow is giving out. I feel like I, you should just. Grindel, I'm gonna buy you a tail. Oh, I got one. Just buy me, buy him a tail. 
No, yeah, no. I will. I'll get a Even tail a for Jim to put tail on. just gets it. crunched in here. I just was stabbing me. Ugh. So, anyway, I got to go. It's It's been fun. Before you go. <laughs> go ahead, Jim. Before you go, Ryzen, just, just a final question. Well, yes. well, well, Regarding well. The, the outcome. Of, yes, if we, we were to have a uh, DNA infusion of riser DNA, uh -huh. Regarding the balance that we humans need, what would be your optimal uh, mix, your rec recommendation of other species as well as riser? I would recommend... So that we could be balanced. I would recommend that, well, for one thing, you'll be a lot better looking. But no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but um, for one thing, you'll be greatly balanced with Octorian. Because Octorian and we get along in many ways. Even though they're really high spiritually, they have a way to communicate with us that is really cool. So we would, our DNA with Octorian would be really good. You'd be strong, intelligent, wise, honorable, strong. I said strong. But strong is a good word. We can use it again. <laughs> All those things would be infused with whoever you are, and if you have some of those characteristics, well, they'd just be stronger then. Yeah. You still wouldn't yes. be good. Looking. What about the ratio? I would do... Yes. What about no the ratios? Than, the yeah. No more than 6% reptilian. You'd go crazy. But uh, you can do a high amount of Octorian. It, it depends on the individual. They'd have to figure that out, what your ratios would be, because it's individual to each person. However, you still wouldn't be better looking. So. Thank you. Let's make some noise. <laughs> you rock. Thank you. Thank you. You, rock. <laughs> you guys are so cool. Love you, Grinch. Love you. <laughs> You're weird, but I said it's wrong. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, yeah, the Octorian in there somewhere, yeah. Thank you, Rathmana. Wow. Just... So much of the Arcturians that they just came. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Hello. Jim. We gotta get you a tail. <laughs> yeah. And I know where to get the perfect one. If he stays in me any longer, I'm going to grow one. <laughs> um, yeah. Our handle. He leaves me. It's, he just squeezes in there. I don't know how, but it's, it's, it's okay. All right, let's start the next sequence. Um, these are basically the... Blessings and thanks. So I'm, I'm really thankful. Uh, somebody came very recently and said one devoted follower, you know, helped the whole community. And uh, I would like to really thank Slava. He he does amazing job. He does beautiful videos. I asked him to compile a compilation of what this human colony is about, and he did a miraculous video. Just check it out. It's mm -hmm. On the top right uh, of the of the site, and this goes to our friends at Object Reporter YouTube channel, so it's already there. 
and this is great help. So we are starting to network. So we got Roxy join us. That was that was yeah. wonderful. Amazing. That was wonderful. So we finally get to to other you know our people come to our gatherings webinars and you know please invite them. We'll uh, accommodate their timing and we'll do a hangout with them. And we'll ask our questions to others. I invite Brad Johnson and Zachariah and everybody. So yes, cool. yes, yes. Brad Johnson has been with us one time, what I know. Yes, and uh, Rob <laughs> Goff here, of course. He's a wonderful person. Hey, I, 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 Rob, I, mean, Rob. I actually have connected with Brad Johnson and Brother Rob telepathically a couple times. They're wonderful people. Wonderful. Yeah. They have assisted me in awakening a lot of energies. They're so good and giving, and they do a lot of sacrificing as well. So I like them very much. Uh, you know, we have our own channelers. The advantage of inviting channelers from already established channelers is that our audience has kind of be become introduced to each other. That is mm -hmm. that networking brings like a big, a big uh, enhancement to to us and to them. Um, I'm blanking. Uh, yes, I was thanking Slava. Yes, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I got a lot of support last days. I, <laughs> I started doing this. I was, I guess, my, uh, you know, little, how do you call them, gnomes or whatever, little, little spiritual thing, entities that mess up my electronics. How do you? Call them? Uh, this, you know, uh, I, uh, in Russian, I know that in Russian, like little things that mess up things. How do you call them? Uh, the ghost little gremlins. <laughs> gremlins. Yeah, little gremlins are yeah. uh, messing up my electronics. They mess up my uh, demons. Yeah, Skype recorder. So I had to test it like every day until I almost fix it, and they still keep messing it up. But you know, to <laughs> test it, it only m misbehaves that you have a poor connection with some place far, far, far apart. So I had so much pleasure speaking to lots of you, and thank you very much for being with me. And I, I recommend everyone try to set up this Skype recorder for yourself, and you will have an excuse to speak to everybody. I was so happy. You just see the faces. You see, you know, you just knock to, to on all the all the doors and say, "I'm here for a minute." You don't have to even to speak. I just need some some testing. And I I had wonderful um, things. So thank you everybody for being with me. I recommend everyone connect to each other through Skype or whatever or Hangouts and just do one on one. Hello, things that that is so healing. Yes, Max, the conversation was was amazing, and I want to thank you for that, and also for your webinar on DNA. I really enjoyed that. It was good. Yeah, thank you for those those two people who actually attended it. Uh, I was I was blessed. It was a perfect audience. They were patiently listening to all the bumbling I did, and. If you write it down, if you transcribe it, actually I dictate, dictated pretty good text, but you know it was slow going, so it wasn't as spectacular as other other things. But it was pretty scientifically correct. I did a couple of mistakes, but it is a good good outline of what I wanted to say. I'm I'm satisfied actually. I love the drawings, Max. The draw your drawings were awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm tempted now to do. Drawing while Jim speaks, and then I will show it to you. I don't know, but maybe it's not diplomatically correct to draw one while people speak to one. But no, that's all right. That, well, that could be fun. All right, so yeah, still, still blessings. Th th thanks, thanks everybody. Let's build a good community, and uh, we grow at a good pace. If we grow faster, we, we might kind of become harmed. But you know, let's grow and gel. Yeah, that's a good word. Let's gel together. Let's uh, form. One to one connection, so so it's not top cent top center, it's kind of distributed, yeah, distributed network. Gel, wow. gel, yeah. You know, hold your hands around there, hold your hands, connect to each other, see who I like most, and just call them. Exchange their phone numbers and call through Skype and just you know you know, say speak to each other. That's you know my blessing for today. And if there's any confrontations, take them out of love, please. Because I think if there's any confrontations, they're going to be trying to get to know you better and understand you better. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are some people that that clash a little bit, but 
I think when they want to talk to you and meet you and and speak to you, that's showing that they really care and that they want to understand you. Mm. It's not that they're trying to be confrontational. They're trying to get to know you better and try to love you better and trying to make the community stronger. And I'm hoping that's what's happening. No, no, do formal blessings. Uh, Sabrina, are you into Arcturian blessings? Sure. I always am. <laughs> <laughs> Tukuru no nuskariata nana, ye 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 kia tuku tukuru, sakatalia nana naska, tono no sariata ka, tono no no siaki, tuku lakata nana skaliakata, tu sikiata nana naski, tono no kali, tu salakata, tanta nana kio sukuruaka, tu siakata tana nasi, tan turu kulaka siakata tana nana. Turu no saki o toku sukuruku, tona laka, ti suku turu akata, tan turu kuto no naka, to sali akato kuruku, tani aka, to si akata kata, tono no su to kuruku, plona no kaske kataka, turu sana na kioko no kuto kuruku, antiokota, to saranana, tona kiyo sukutu. Hola katia kata, anturu kami akusia ka, to sana nakata, to nakiyu sukutu, ona kata ka, to sala katu osuku, turu kota nana nakskiu to kuru kuto nana, ala nana, to siati uto, to nana kuskia ka, tata ni kiyu sukutu, ona na, asutu to, ola kata ka. I traveled the sky as far as I could go, and yet there was more sky. So is my love for you, O Great One. And I've seen things that I could not understand, and lights, and, and peoples. And so is my depth for you, O Great One. And then I went as far as to dive into the deepest sea, and find the bottom, and still could not understand all the things that were there. And so I told you that I would become part of the mystery, O oh Great One. And then I met my love, and love became part of the universe that I did not know, and I felt it in a way that I did not understand or could not perceive entirely. And I give this to you, O oh Great One. There is so much to learn and so much to do. I feel your intensity on my brow and in my heart and on my chakras, O oh Great One. There is times when the planet spins faster for me than other days. And I say, there is no time for me to experience what I need. But you calm me, O oh Great One. And I understand that you are there to bring that thought into mind, which is there for my good. And we bring all these things to you and understand that we are connected together through the sight and sound of you, O Great One. And let us feel and honor one another in the spirit in which it was meant to be. Wow. Oh. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, thank you. Con congratulations, Max, for you started speaking the language now, so. Uh -huh. That's yes. amazing. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'll go slowly. Well, that's okay. They brought you something. A miracle. Yes, miracle. Yeah. Do we know mm. a language? Oh, great one. I haven't heard it yet. Uh. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but... No, no, no. Let's uh, just uh, wrap up. I, I want to take it slowly. Oh. Uh, thank you for coming, and I I hope you got some messages. And yes, yes, and I, I really enjoyed um, some of the things that the Palladians said about the DNA and the DNA infusion. 
I think mm. it, it was really helpful. Excellent. Yes. I think it cleared Excellent. a lot of things, at least for me. Uh, I will be talking to you all shortly, uh, one way or another. So much love to you, and uh, have a great day, and uh, take care. Okay. You too, Jan. Good to see you all. Me too. I love seeing all your faces. I love seeing <laughs> all your faces. And I, and I have to tell you, I tried to get into like three hangouts this week, and I couldn't get into any of them. Oh wow! Wow! I got your uh, message. I I had a uh, a systems error. <gasps> Jaguar! And um, so there was a systems error. Oh, hi. A systems error, and so I'm going to try again this week. Good. All right, goodbye. Okay, bye. Love you both very much, and thank bye -bye. you, as always. Thank you for trying, Jim. Bye-bye.